plan of salvation. They glorify Lucifer. They remove hell. And these are not isolated cases. There are over 6,000 documented changes in just the New Testament alone. Yes, friend, you'd better believe Satan has launched an attack on your Bible. In Luke chapter 8, Jesus Christ tells the parable of the sower. In verses 11 and 12, Jesus says, Now the parable is this, The seed is the word of God. And he goes on to say, Then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word. In the New Testament alone, the New King James takes away 2,000 289 words. The NIV takes away 5,219. The NASV takes over out over 3,500. The RSV takes out over 6,900 words in just the New Testament. And they even take out complete verses, like Acts chapter 8, verse 37. The King James read, And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The NIV, NASV, RSV, New RSV, and the New Versions read zip nothing. They took the whole verse out. One of the best verses in the Bible on salvation through Jesus Christ, and they completely rip it out. One of the greatest verses in all the Bible, Matthew chapter 18, verse 11, For the Son of Man has come to seek, to save that which is lost. They completely take it out. They take out Romans 16, 24, Mark 11, 25, Acts 15, 34, and over and over and over, your Bible is literally taken apart. Jesus Christ says in Luke chapter 4, Verse 4, it is written that men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Not surprising, the NIV and New Versions and crew, they take out the last half of Luke chapter 4, verse 4, but by every word of God. The NIV completely removes 16 verses. The New American Standard removes 17. The RSV completely removes 25. The NRSV removes 16, and so on and so on. Don't take our word for it. Get your Bible back and look them up if you don't believe it. As God promised, friend, He has preserved His word for the English-speaking people in the King James Bible. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 10 says, A divine sentence is in the lips of the king. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4 says, Where the word of the king is, there's power. The King James Bible. By the way, the word James is not an English word, but a Hebrew word. Do you know what the Hebrew word for James is? It's Jacob. You'll never guess what Psalm 147, verse 19 says. He showeth his word unto Jacob. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 9 reads, The word of God is not bound. Anybody can freely print, distribute, and reproduce the King James Bible without asking permission from anybody. It is not bound. All other translations are bound by copyright laws. The New American Standard, copyright, Lockman Foundation. The New International Version, copyright, New York International Bible Society. The New King James Version, copyright, Thomas Nelson Publish. Who would seriously think the living Word of Almighty God is bound by human copyright laws? Friend, if you have a King James Bible, you have the very words of God. And don't let anybody take it from you. Dr. Frank Loxton was the co-founder of the New American Standard Version. And Dr. Loxton actually wrote the preface to the New American Standard. But after re-examining the evidence, Dr. Loxton completely denounced every attachment to the New American Standard. Here's his own words. I'm afraid I'm in trouble with the Lord. I encourage you to go ahead with it. We, we laid the groundwork. I wrote the format. I, I helped to interview some of the translators. I sat with the translators. I wrote the preface. When you see the New American Standard, they're my words. When I got my copy, I got one of the 50 deluxe copies that were printed. Mine was number seven. Blue, light blue cover. But it was a big, rather big, and I couldn't carry it with me. And I, I never really looked at it. I just took for granted it was done as we started it, you know. 
until some of my friends across the country began to learn that I had some part in it, and they started saying, what about this? What about this? Especially Dr. David Otis Fuller in Grand Rapids. I've known him for 35 years, and he'd say, he always called me Frank, I called him Duke. He said, Frank, what about this? You had part in it. What, what about this? What about this? Well, first, I thought, no, wait a minute. Let's don't go overboard. Let's don't be too pretty. You know how you justify yourself the last minute. I got the place. I said to Anne, I'm in trouble. I can't refute these arguments. They're, it's wrong. It's terribly wrong. It is frightfully wrong. And what am I going to do about it? Well, I went through heart search, uh, some real soul searching for about four months. I don't know. I think about four months. And I sat down and wrote the most difficult letter of my life, I think. And I wrote to my friend Dewey, and I said, Dewey, I don't want to add to your problems. Lost his wife some three years ago. I was there for the funeral. The uh, doctor made a mistake in operating on a cataract. He lost the sight of one eye, then had to have an operation on the other. Had a slight heart attack, had sugar diabetes, man 74 years of age. But I wrote and said, I can no longer ignore these criticisms I'm hearing, and I can't refute them. The only thing I can do, and dear brother, I have nothing against you, and I can witness at the judgment seat of Christ. And before men were ever go that you were 100% sincere, he's not a translator, he's not, he's not schooled in language or anything, he's just a businessman. He did the promoting, he had the money, he did the promoting. So I, I said, he did it conscientiously. He wanted absolutely right, he thought it was right. I guess nobody pointed out some of these things to him when it was finished, but nevertheless, I said, I must, under God, renounce every attachment to the New American Standard. I have the copy of the letter. In fact, I have his letter. Showed it to some people that Robert saw it. Mike saw it. Stating that he was bowled over, that he was shocked beyond words. That that's putting it mildly, but he said, I'll write you in a few weeks. I still love you. To me, you're going to be Franklin, my friend, throughout the course. He said, I'll write you in three weeks. But he won't write me now. He was to be married, sent us an invitation to come to reception. Standing in the courtroom, I mean in the county court by the desk, the clerk said, what is your full name, sir? And he said, Franklin Dewey. That's the last word he spoke on this earth. So he was buried two days before he was supposed to be married, and he's with the Lord, and he loves the Lord. He knows different now. But I tell you, dear people, you're going to have, somebody's going to have to stand. And no matter if you stand against the, the every everyone else, stand.